Hi everyone, welcome to Sweat and Refresh. My name is Jonathan. For today's practice, you'll need a pair of blankets or towels. Keep them folded up and nearby, easily accessible. Start in a comfortable seated position, cross-legged or kneeling. Stack the spine up tall and close your eyes. And just for those first few moments of the practice, take a moment to pause. Maybe this is the first pause you've given yourself all day. As you take that pause here, gently nudge your awareness in the direction of your breath. So you start to notice the flow, your inhales and your exhales. Flowing gently through the nose. Notice the rhythm of breath. The ratio between the inhale and the exhale. And place the left hand over your heart, right hand over your belly. And as you follow your breath here, allow for a little more expansion with the inhales. Contraction with the exhales. Inhaling to fill up. Exhaling to empty out. One more inhale, fill all the way up, filling belly, ribs, collarbone. Open your mouth and sigh with the breath. <sighs> Palms connect in prayer at heart center, thumbs rest into the sternum. Take a moment here to set a sankalpa, an intention. Carrying this intention through the practice. It can really be anything that helps to direct your attention, your focus. Let's start to the sound of a single ohm. Inhale. Oh. And blink the eyes open. Roll over the legs, find a tabletop position. So in that tabletop position, palms are under the shoulders, knees are under the hips. Exhale, tuck and round. Inhale, lift and arch. So exhale into round the spine, inhale into arch the spine. Keep that going with your breath. The exhales flex the spine and round it. The inhales extend and arch. So already here we notice the shoulders, the hips, the length of the spinal column. Just exactly how much effort we can put into the body. Come back through to neutral. And walk the tabletop closer to the back edge of your mat if it's not there already. Step the hands forward and lower the forehead down towards the floor. Puppy pose. And it's like down dog but with the knees on the floor. Pushing into the palms. Lift the hips up away from your hands. So the shoulders actually stay pretty strong here. Nice. Take one more breath in your puppy pose. And as you sigh that breath out, shift forward. Lie down on your belly. Press down into the tops of the feet. Inhale, peel up chest and chin, baby cobra. Heart is trying to pull forward as the elbows hug in. The muscles running up and down your spine are strong. One more inhale across the chest. Exhale to lower all the way down. Slide the palms so they're closer to your chest. Tuck the toes and either push yourself up to tabletop or a high plank on the inhale. Your first downward facing dog, sit bones lifting up on the exhale. In that down dog, you can pedal at the heels. You can stay still and static. It's really up to you how you think the body should be tonight. Inhale, come forward, high plank. Exhale, back to down dog. Inhale, the shift forward, high plank. Exhale, back to down dog. And one more time. Inhale, shift forward, high plank. Exhale, back to down dog. Look forward, inhale, exhale, bend the knees, step or jump, 
top of the mats. Halfway lift. Inhale. Exhale to fold. And rooting down into the feet. Inhale, come all the way up. Reach for the ceiling. Grow as tall as you can. Exhale, hinge and fold over the legs. Halfway lift. Inhale. On the exhale, fingertips to the floor. Step the left foot all the way back. Lower the left knee down. Untuck the toes. And inhale, bring hands to the hips. Exhale, press your hips forward and down. And just watch that right knee. It can be over the ankle or slightly past, but don't let it go past the right toes. Add the arms reaching up here, growing tall through the arms, through the torso, lengthening the front of that left hip. You take one more breath. And as you exhale, release the hands down to the floor. Tuck the back toes, pick up the knee, step the right foot all the way back. From high plank, lower down to your belly. Press into the tops of the feet. Inhale, peel up chest and chin, baby or full cobra. Hug the elbows in. Breathe across your heart. One more inhale. Exhale to lower all the way down. Tuck the toes, either tabletop or high plank on the inhale. Downward facing dog on the exhale. Each time you find that down dog, you can be still and static, breathing into the shape, or add a little bit of movement. Notice how the body feels. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, bend the knees, step or jump, top of the mat. Halfway lift. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Root down into the feet. Inhale, come all the way up. Reach for the ceiling. Grow tall. Again, exhale, hinge and fold over the legs. Halfway lift. Inhale. Exhale, fingertips to the floor, step the right foot all the way back, lower the knee down. Inhale, hands to the hips, and exhale to press the hips forward and down. So we get this lengthening across the front of the right hip. Add the arms reaching up, high runner's lunge, low runner's lunge, I should say. As the hips sink forward and down, think about that left knee not going too far past the ankle or toes. If that's happening, wiggle the left foot further forward. Take one more inhale, exhale, release the hands down to the floor, tuck the back toes, pick up the knee, step the left foot all the way back and lower to your belly. Pressing into the tops of the feet, inhale, peel up chest and chin, baby or full cobra, hug the elbows in, pull your heart forward. Take one more breath, exhale, lower all the way down. Tuck the toes, either tabletop or high plank on the inhale, downward facing dog, on the exhale, and just notice even with those first couple flows, couple sequences, how the body starts to wake up, change and shift. Inhale, look forward, exhale, bend the knee, step or jump lightly, top of the mats. Halfway lift, inhale, exhale to fold. And this time, big toes touch, knees hug in. As you inhale, bend the knees, reach the arms up, chair pose, Utkatasana. So in that chair pose, squeeze the knees together. Sink a little deeper into your chair. Try to keep your knees back behind the toes. One more big breath. Exhale, hinge and fold. Halfway lift, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, place the palm, step or jump the feet back. Knees can come down for support if you need it. Lean forward, elbows hug in as you bend the elbows to 90 degrees, chaturanga. Back up to supported plank or high plank. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Sit bones lift up. Nice. Inhale, take the right leg up, three leg dog. Exhale, knee to the nose. Step the right foot in between the hands. Rise up on the inhale, high runner's lunge. So this time the back knee stays lifted. Keep sinking down into the legs, super strong legs as you reach up through the fingertips. Catch the left wrist of the right hand, pull that arm up, squeeze right side body and then lean to the right. Lengthen your left side. So we find this side bend out to the side, breathing into the left ribs. Inhale, pull yourself up. Exhale, release the left hand down to the floor. Inhale, reach the right arm up. Notice that the right hip comes with you. Push that right hip down, even as you reach the right hand up. Twisting to the right. Try to look up at the right thumb. One more inhale. Exhale, release the right hand down. Step the right foot back. Vinyasa. Knees can come down for support if you need it. Chaturanga on the exhale. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. And exhale, back over the toes. Downward facing dog. 
Reset with the breath in your down dog. Lifting up and out of the shoulders. Make your torso a little taller. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, bend the knee, step or jump. Top of the mat. Halfway lift. Inhale. Exhale to fold. Again, big toes touch, knees hugging as you inhale, bend the knees, reach the arms up, chair pose. So that in that chair pose, squeeze the knees together. Feel the inner thighs work really strongly here. Sink a little deeper into your chair and a little deeper. Great job. One more inhale, exhale, hinge and fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale to place the palm, step or jump the feet back, high plank. Knees down if you need or keep them lifted for chaturanga. Elbows hug in and then bend to 90 degrees. Inhale, upward facing dog or right back to plank if you need. And exhale back over the toes, downward facing dog. In your down dog, pedal out the heels. Give your head a little shake. Nice inhale, left leg goes up, three leg dog. Exhale, knee to the nose. Step the foot in between the hands. Rise up on the inhale, high runner's lunge. Whew. In that high runner's lunge, sink into the legs. Reach up through your fingertips. One more breath here. As you release the breath, right hand comes down to the floor. Left arm reaches up. And as you reach up through the left fingertips, push down through the left hip. So don't let that left hip come with you. Push it down to the floor. One more breath. Release left hand down to the mat. Step the left foot back. Take a vinyasa. Chaturanga to upward facing dog. You're always welcome to skip asana and go right to downward facing dog. Notice the breath here. Try to keep it steady, calm, and collected in your downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, bend the knees, step or jump lightly, top of the mat. Halfway lift. And exhale to fold. Big toes touch, knees hugging as you inhale, bend the knees, reach the arms up. We're back in chair. Sink lower in that chair. And then see if you can actually sit down without using your hands. Extend the legs forward. Find a low boat. So in that low boat, your back, your low back and your sacrum push into the floor. The shoulder blades stay lifted and the legs stay lifted. Squeeze the feet together. Point the toes. Keep breathing. Even though there's a lot of effort here in core, hip flexors and quads, you're doing so well. Lean to your left. Feel right side body engage. Keep breathing. Lean to your right. Feel left side body engage. Keep breathing. Back through center and release. Nice. Try to control the release when you come down to the floor. Feel the heartbeat and the corresponding rhythm of your breath. Slow that breath rate. We're staying in this comfortable place even when there's effort in the body. Take an inhale. And as you sigh that breath out, hug the right knee in towards your chest, interlace the fingers over the shin, pull the right thigh closer and closer. You can reach the right arm out to the side, keep the left hand on the shin, guide the right knee across the body into a spinal twist. Look over the right shoulder. Keep that right shoulder and shoulder blade pinned down towards the floor as you twist here. One more breath. Exhale, come back through center. Straighten the right leg. Take an inhale. Exhale, left knee in towards the chest. Interlace the fingers over the shin. Pull the thigh close. Nice. Releasing the left arm out to the side. Palm face up. Use the right hand. Guide the left knee across the body into a spinal twist. The knee doesn't have to find the floor. It's more important that the shoulder and shoulder blade stays down on the mat. The twist is coming from your upper back, your thoracic spine. One more breath. Exhale to come through center. Straighten the left leg, lie flat for a moment. Just notice left side, right side. And as things start to shift and change, where is that shift happening in your body? Take an inhale. As you exhale, hug both knees into your chest. Wrap the arms around the legs. Rock to the left and the right, massaging the muscles, running up and down your back. We'll use some momentum here. Take the hands behind the knees. Start to rock the length of your spine. So once you get that momentum going, we're thinking about rocking forward, plant the feet, stand all the way up. And it might be really graceful at first, maybe it's not, that's okay, do your best. Once you're standing tall, reach really tall through your fingertips, inhale. As you exhale, hinge and fold over the legs. 
Halfway lift. Inhale. Exhale. Place the palm. Step or jump the feet back. Hold your high plank. So this time in your high plank, push the floor away. Feel the upper back round slightly as you separate shoulder blades. Roll to the outer edge of the right foot, the inner edge of the left, and then reach the left arm up. Side plank. Vashisthasana. This is too challenging. Take the right knee down to the floor. So actually end up in a shape that's supported by one leg, but still find the squeeze in right side body to lift and engage. If you don't need that, you have the feet thusly. Yes, I just said thusly. <laughs> one more inhale. As you exhale, release through center. Let's go to the other side. Roll to the outer edge of the left foot, the inner edge of the right. Right arm reaches up. Vashisthasana, side plank. If you need to modify, the left knee can come down to the floor. But keep feeling that squeeze in the left side body. Breathing here. All right, we'll all maybe look a little different. That's perfectly fine. Take one more breath. Exhale, release through center. Lower all the way down to your belly. Sweep the arms back behind you, palms face up. Inhale, lift up the chest, the chin, the arms and the legs. Engage the muscles running up and down your spine. You're doing so well. Stay with your breath here. Got one more inhale. Can you lift up a little bit higher? And as you exhale, release. Palms under the shoulders, tuck the toes, tabletop or high plank. Inhale, downward facing dog on the exhale. Paddling out the feet, noticing the shift. Turn the left foot in about 45 degrees. Step the right foot forward in between the hands. Rise up, bring hands to the hips. Warrior one foundation, your legs. So the back heel spun to the floor. We have a little bit more grip to push into the pinky edge of the foot and drive the left hip forward, pulling the right hip back. Add the arms reaching up, warrior one. Maybe we're connecting the palms and looking up towards the thumbs. Don't hold your breath, keep the breath flowing. One more inhale. As you exhale, open up, warrior two, heart and hips, then turn to the left edge of the mat, arms reach wide. Look past the right middle finger. So the drifty point, your focus point is forward past that right hand. Inhale, turn the right palm to the ceiling, exhale, reverse your warrior and follow that right hand back as you lean back. Left hand can be on the left thigh or reaching behind the low back. Big inhale into the right ribs, Exhale, sweep forward, right elbow to the right thigh. Left arm reaches forward past the top edge of your mat. Turn that pinky finger down towards the floor and extend your side angle. If you're going a little further, right hand can come down to the floor inside the right foot. Choose the option that works for you. Maybe even find a bind. Left arm behind the back, right arm goes underneath the right thigh and bind fingers or wrist. Nice, do whatever works. Look past the left shoulder. Can you look up? Take one more inhale, exhale to release the hands down to the floor. Step back for vinyasa if you want it. That's chaturanga to upward facing dog or right to a downward facing dog. In that down dog, give the heels a little pedal. Notice the shift, last flow. Inhale, look forward, exhale, bend the knees, step or jump lightly, top of the mats. Halfway lift, inhale, exhale to fold. Big toes touch, knees hugging as you inhale, bend the knees, reach the arms up, chair pose. Try to come down as slowly as you can, all the way to a seated position. Of course, use your hands if you need to. Extend the legs forward. We're again in low boat. In that low boat position, squeeze the inner thighs together. Really strong through anterior chain, front side body. Lean to your left, feeling right side body engage. Keep breathing. Lean back through center, lean to your right, left side body engages, back through center, and release. When you release, try to release with care, with a bit of control, down to the floor. Take an inhale. As you exhale, hug the left knee in towards your chest, interlace the fingers over the shin, pull that left thigh closer and closer. You can reach the left arm out to the side, palm face up. Guide the left knee across the body into a spinal twist. Don't worry about going super far. If you'd like, you can even add the gaze here. Look towards your left hand. So the twist radiates all the way from tailbone to the top of the head. Mm -hmm. 
One more breath. Carefully come back through to center. Straighten the left leg. Take an inhale. Exhale, right knee in towards the chest. Interlace the fingers over the shin. Pull the thigh close. Reach the right arm out to the side. Palm face up. Use the left hand to guide the right knee across the body. Spinal twist. And maybe even turn the gaze this time. Look towards your right hand. Breathe some space here. Into the spine. Your hip, your shoulder. One more breath. Exhale to come back through the center. Straighten that right leg. Lie flat for a moment. Feel left side, right side. Big inhale. Exhale, hug both knees into your chest. Wrap the arms around the legs. Give yourself a squeeze, rocking to the left and to the right, massaging the muscles running up and down your spine. So if you found it really challenging to rock up to stand, this time try it with the feet a bit wider, about hip width. Begin to rock the length of your spine. Hands can be behind the knees to start to get that momentum going. And then once you have momentum, rock forward, plant the feet, stand all the way up. Yeah. And maybe with the feet a bit wider, you feel like it was a bit easier to stand up. Add the arms reaching up, inhale. Exhale, hinge and fold over the legs. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, place the palms, step the feet back. You guessed it, high plank. So from that high plank, to give our wrists a bit of love, lower down onto your forearms. We'll try the Vashisthasana, our side plank, from the forearm position. Roll to the outer edge of the left foot, inner edge of the right. Right hand can find the right hip or reach up. It's up to you. You can also modify this by taking the left knee down to the floor again. Still engaging left side body. One more breath. Exhale, roll through center, right forearm to the floor. Roll to the outer edge of the right foot, inner edge of the left. Left hand is either on the left hip or reaching up. Again, modify if you need by taking the right knee down to the floor to support some of the weight. One more breath. Beautiful work. Exhale, release through center. Lower all the way down to your belly. You can take the elbows wide to help you get there. Take the arms wide for this variation of your locust pose. Inhale, lift up chest, chin, arms and legs. Breathe here. Can you lift your arms a little higher? Good. Lift your legs a little higher. Exhale to release. Palms under the shoulders, tuck the toes, tabletop or high plank. Inhale, downward facing dog on the exhale. So in that downward facing dog, you can be still and static or a little bit more dynamic. Same idea on the other side. Right foot turns in 45 degrees. Set the left foot forward in between the hands. Rise up, inhale, hands to the hips. Warrior one legs. The pinky side of that back foot roots into the floor and drives the right hip forward in space. Left hip pulls back, arms reach up, warrior one. If you'd like to look up, you can connect the palms and look up towards your thumbs. Breathe here. One more inhale. Exhale to open up, warrior two. Heart and hips now turn to the right edge of the mat. Arms are reaching wide, look past the left middle finger. Inhale, turn the left palm to the ceiling. Exhale, reverse your warrior. Right hand can go gently down the right thigh or reach back behind the low back. Breathe into the left ribs. Inhale. Exhale to sweep forward, left elbow to the left thigh. Right arm reaches forward past the top edge of your mat, extending the side angle. Don't hold your breath here. If you're going a little further, maybe the left hand comes down inside the left foot. You can even find a bind. Right arm behind the back, left arm reaches underneath the, right, the left thigh, I should say. Look up past that right shoulder. Keep the breath flowing. One more breath. And exhale, release. Hands come down. Step the left foot back. If you'd like to take vinyasa, you are welcome to it. Take chaturanga to up dog. It's the last one of the practice meeting in a downward facing dog. And from that downward facing dog, I'll invite you to carefully lower the knees down as wide as the mat. Big toes touch near the back of the mat. Shift your hips to the heels and walk the hands forward a touch. Child's pose. Balasana. Settling into the mats in your balasana. Your child's pose. Very little effort needed here. And you start to make a transition. The transition for us 
is from effort to ease, from sweat to refresh. Especially after bringing some muscle energy into the body, you might feel like you get a little bit more help with that transition. We'll spend a little longer in some of these shapes. Really no rush. One more breath in child's pose. And as you sigh that breath out, push into your palms, start to walk your hands back towards your knees. Take the knees together, sit up tall in Thunderbolt. And Thunderbolt is simply sitting nice and tall in a kneeling shape. If that's really uncomfortable on the ankles or the knees, please modify by sitting cross-legged or even sit on your blankets, your props. Now, take the hands, interlace the hands behind the back, squeeze shoulder blades together, and bring that big fist you created over towards the right hip. Hug the right elbow in. This will effectively lock that left shoulder back and down. Lower your right ear towards the right shoulder. Lengthen the left side of your neck. And you can further modify this, change what you're feeling by either turning the chin down towards the right shoulder or up towards the ceiling. Dialing in the stretch on the right side, as you say, the left side of your neck. Breathe into that space. Allow the breath to be comfortable and easy as you release tension out of the jaw, the neck, even the front of that left shoulder. One more breath. And as you sigh that breath out, release the head back up through center, release the arms, give the hands a little shake. You can roll the shoulders. If you'd like, you can actually shift forward, plant the palms and straighten one leg at a time, wiggle out the toes. Especially if you're noticing as you're holding the shape, the feet are getting sore. Come back into your kneeling shape, all the way back upright. Sweep the arms back behind you, interlace the fingers maybe the other way, other thumb on top, squeeze shoulder blades together, bring the big fist over towards your left hip, hug the left elbow in. This locks the right shoulder back and down. Carefully lower the left ear towards the left shoulder, lengthening the right side of your neck, your cervical spine. You can further change the shape by either turning the chin down towards the left shoulder or up towards the ceiling. And really dial in that stretch into the right side of your cervical spine, your neck. Each side might be slightly different. So you might take a slightly different option. Last couple breaths, in through the nose, out through the nose. When it's time to release, carefully lift the head back up through center and release the arms first. Shake out the hands, roll your shoulders, shift forward, plant the palms, straighten one leg at a time, wiggling out the toes. Nice. It's really good. This time, tuck your toes. So all 10 toes are touching the floor. Walk your hands again back towards the knees and try to come upright, sitting on the heels, stretching the soles of the feet. So you won't be here for very long, just long enough to notice the soles of the feet and tension we might be holding there. If you felt like your entire posterior chain, all the backside body felt very tight this evening, your forward folds felt a bit restricted. I recommend doing this type of stretch in the mornings. Release the soles of your feet. Your posterior chain actually starts from the big toe and runs all the way across the sole of the foot and then up the back of the legs, up the spine. Take one more breath here. And as you sigh the breath out, you can take the hands back down to the floor, straighten one leg at a time, wiggle out the toes. Toes stay tucked. As you walk the hands back towards your knees, lift the knees up off the floor, put the heels to the floor, walk your hands all the way back towards the feet. Catch opposite elbows and dangle over the thighs. So in our yin practice, a dangle pose 
is nothing other than just dangling over the legs. But what I'd like you to consider is how close you could get the torso to the thighs. And that might mean you actually bend your knees a touch. So notice the difference between straightening the legs, maybe the bum is sticking back a lot, and the spine feels very rounded, to leaning the weight forward a bit into the balls of the feet, allowing the knees to release, even just a micro bend, you may feel like you gain quite a bit of space without feeling like you're straining. The object isn't a deep shape. The object is a nice release. So we feel a little better in the body. Try to keep the breath flowing comfortably in through the nose, out through the nose. If you'd like, you can add a very subtle sway to the left and to the right. Stimulating the left side and the right side of the low back. Last couple breaths. You can release through center, hands to the floor, crawl the hands forward, bring the knees down, tabletop. In that tabletop, palms under the shoulders, knees under the hips, three cycles, cat and cow. Exhaling to round the spine, inhaling to arch. Exhale, tuck and round. Inhale, lift and arch. Last time, exhale, tuck and round. Inhale, lift and arch. Come back to neutral, and I'll get you to find a seated position while we set up one of our last couple shapes. So I like using props. I'm going to use blankets or towels rolled up. If you don't have anything like that, but you have some pillows nearby, you can make do with pillows as well. Once you've rolled up one of your blankets or towels, take that so it runs the length of your mat right in front of you here. So it creates this nice long tube. Your second towel or blanket is folded up just a couple inches. If you need to fold it more, you're always welcome to fold it more afterwards. Place that in front of that long tube. And then turning around, we'll lie down on this prop setup. As you lie down on the prop setup, shoulder blades are on either side of the tube. Base of the skull is on the blanket that's folded. So that the effect that we receive as we lie down is a nice expansion across the hearts, the shoulders, as a chest opener and shoulder opener, allowing the upper back to come into a bit more extension. The knees can stay bent if that's more comfortable or straighten your legs, let them drop out Relax onto your props. If it feels like the neck is not very comfortable here, take the blanket that's under the base of the skull and fold it a little bit more. So you can always modify this shape by adding more height or less height. The last thing to bring some attention to is how the arms feel here, your shoulders. The palms might stay face up closer to the thighs. Face up all the way out to the sides. Well, one of my favorites is actually cactus arms. Elbows at the same level as the shoulders. Back of the hands pressed down towards the floor. It stimulates a little bit more external rotation in the shoulder. Breathe across the heart, whichever version you've ended up in. Using some of the heat that we brought into front side body through all the pushing that we did to find release now. Lengthening out that space. Remembering it's not about the shape, it's about the release the shape can help us find. Last few breaths, in through the nose, out through the nose. When it's time to release, do it slowly by bending the knees, soles the feet to the floor. Take the left hand to your belly and then roll to the right. Roll off your props. 
into a prone position, lying on your side. Push into the left palm and sit all the way up. Nice. Move the blankets off to the side. You can have one on the left and one on the right, so we can access them if we need them. Keep them folded. Lie back down. Now we have no props underneath us. Just lying flat on the back. Bend your knees, bring the soles of the feet to the floor. Feet are parallel and hip width. Try to keep the shoulder blades pushing down into the mat. The base of the skull is connected to the floor. Just very slowly, feet stay where they are. Lower both knees to your right, rolling across the outer right hip. And then coming back through center, take both knees to the left, rolling across the outer left hip. Continue to go side to side here. Sometimes we call this windshield wipering the knees but have it on the slowest setting. So it's very, very slow here, rolling across the outer hip. There's a little sensation here of spinal twist, but also stimulation in the hips. One or two more times each side before pausing in center. Heel toe the feet to connect, allow the knees to drop out wide, finding Supta Bhadakanasana, reclined butterfly, bound angle. If the thighs need it, you can actually find your props that you've set up already. Slide the blanket so that they're underneath the thighs or under the knees for just a little bit of support in that butterfly shape. Palms can rest face up next to the thighs, face down on the thighs, one of my favorites, interlace the fingers, take the hands behind the head, and let the elbows drop out to the side. Settling into your shape, breathing in through your nose, and out through your nose. And just recognizing the space that you've managed to create for yourself, even with this short practice. Last few breaths, in through the nose, out through the nose. When it's time to release, release the hands first. Reach down towards the thighs and close the legs up like a book. Hug both knees into your chest, wrap the arms around your legs, give yourself a squeeze. If you'd like, you can rock to the left and the right, massaging the muscles running up and down your back. If you feel like you've prepared yourself for a shape, you need one more shape for this practice to feel complete, you're welcome to take any pose you wish. If, however, you feel ready for Javasana, take one more inhale. As you sigh that breath out, straighten the legs, lie flat, have the palms face up next to the thighs, the feet a comfortable distance apart. If there's props in your way, just move them off to the side slightly. Be as neutral as you can as you lie here flat on your back. And your Shavasana is an integration of everything you worked on in the practice. Just as important as even the sweaty parts of the class. And you commit just to be still for a few moments here. Allow the jaw to soften. The space between your eyebrows smooths. All effort is released out of the body. Shavasana. And as you rest into the floor here, noticing where the awareness is headed to, 
whether it's gone to a specific physical point in the body or your mental state and emotion. Start to lengthen your inhales and your exhales. And as breath reconnects you to the body, carefully move your fingers and move your toes. Turn your head side to side. You can inhale, give yourself a stretch. Exhale to soften. One more time, inhale, stretch it out. And exhale to soften. Bend your knees and either roll to one side to sit up or you can rock up into a seated position. Sitting cross-legged or kneeling, stack the spine up nice and tall. Close your eyes. Draw the shoulders up, back, and down, lengthening the space across your collarbone. Allow the breath to come back into that comfortable rhythm. Notice with this practice where you've created a little more space. You can place the left hand over the heart, right hand over the belly. Inhale, fill all the way up, belly, ribs, collarbone. Open your mouth, sigh out that breath. <sighs> Again, one more time. Inhale, fill all the way up. Open your mouth, sigh out the breath. <sighs> Palms net in prayer at heart center, thumbs rest into the sternum. Revisit your sankalpa, your intention. Carrying that with you off the mat into the rest of your day. Let's end to the sound of a single ohm. Inhale. Oh. And bow your heads. Thanks for being here to share this energy. Please take some of this with you off your mat. Share with those you love. Namaste.